I'm here with Mr. Erwin Kotler, an MK in the Canadian Parliament. Tell me, what are the relationships like between the U.S. and Canada at this point? I think the relationships uh, are good. Uh, we always have had, because not too many things that can cause problems as they can in other places. I mean, Israel is in a hostile environment. We have, you know, uh, a peaceful neighbor, which makes life much, much easier. So that the things about which we may have some concerns will be the kinds of the things that Israel would dream about to have such concerns uh, with, uh, you know, Arab neighbors. There is the issue now where uh, Canada is interested with respect to oil exploration and the and United States and uh, the United States has certain environmental concerns so that's uh, one issue. Uh, there is the question at, at this point I think of uh, matters relating to well, I would leave it at that. I think that's probably the, the, the major matter of concern uh, between us. As I say, one has to struggle hard to find issues that are uh, divisive and, and dividing us at this point. How do you gauge the status of diaspora-Israeli relationship? I think one of the, the good things about it is that there are more people that are frankly now uh, engaged in that relationship. Uh, here in Israel you have a, for the first time a Knesset caucus on Israel diaspora relations. It's amazing that it's taken so long to have a, a caucus, but I think it reflects the fact that this is now, you know, engaging Chavrei uh, Knesset here in Israel. Second thing is that there's going to be a, a, a there is now, under a Nat Wilf, uh, a, 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 a parliamentary committee, a Knesset committee on Israel diaspora relations. So the thing is now entered into the parliamentary and political context in the way that it hasn't uh, before I think in the uh, diaspora, because of you know various programs that didn't exist, whether it be birthright or whether it be massa, you know, for people, younger people, young adults, uh, etc. Uh, then other you know cross relationships, and you come to Israel now. There's almost a day that doesn't go by that there's not some uh, engagement. So I think that there's more uh, encounters going on. There's probably more of a uh, here divisiveness on some of the subject matter, but I think that's also healthy. The main thing is that uh, we are engaging with, with each other more, and uh, from that will come the kind of, uh, I think, shared in involvement that we need. You've, your government has been staunchly in favor of Israel, has been come out very um, strongly in support of Israel. As Canadians spectate uh, the p political scene in the United States, in your neighboring country, how do they view this administration's approach to Israel? Well, I think, you know, uh, thus far the, on that issue, even though it's a democratic administration in the states and a conservative government in Canada, I happen to belong to the liberal opposition, so let's say my uh, counterparts would be more the democratic uh, party. But I think on the Israel thing, uh, they've been moving together pretty much in common cause. I think on the uh, Iranian file, uh, there's been, I, I, I think, a shared appreciation that uh, Iran has emerged as a clear and present danger to international peace and security, to regional and Middle East uh, stability, and increasingly and alarmingly so to its own people. So we are in sync on the issue of Iran. Uh, I think on the question of uh, delegitimization uh, of Israel, I think here too uh, there's been a, a shared uh, appreciation uh, on that issue as well. So I think if you look at the various approaches, I mean, Obama has identified what I would call the uh, principles or parameters for of the American-Israeli relationship that are not unlike uh, the uh, Canadian-Israeli relationship, even though Harper is seen uh, as Israel's best friend. Uh, but I think that on the substance of it, uh, what Obama has said is fairly similar to what Harper said, except the emotional connection sometimes between Obama and Israel is not felt as much as, let's say, that between this uh, Canadian government and Israel. Do you believe that the rift between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Obama can be reconciled? I don't think the rift is as great as it's made out uh, to be. Uh, I think there were moments when the, uh, there were uh, you know, different uh, perspectives and different ways of approaching those uh, perspectives. Uh, but I don't see it now as, as a rift. I think on a number of the major issues uh, at this point there is a, I think, a shared consensus. The question will be now, and one of the real tests, is what will happen with regard to Iran. 
I mean, if, uh, as it now appears, uh, there is not going to be any success on the negotiating or diplomatic uh, uh, front, uh, and the sanctions then kick in at the beginning of, of July, and that doesn't move the Iranians from uh, away from its weaponization program, uh, then, as uh, Obama said, uh, all options are on the table. I'm not bluffing, and I think Obama's main position, which I think is the Israelis' uh, main position, was that uh, you know a nuclear Iran, if I can quote Obama, is unacceptable. Now, our position is to prevent a nuclear Iran, not to contain uh, a nuclear Iran. So I think that if that position of principle and policy remains, then I think there'll be common cause. If it doesn't, uh, then the, the rift that you spoke of might be there. If Israel determines that the red lines have been crossed and now is a time for a strike, would Canada support that? Uh, I, I can't speak for what the government might do, uh, but I think this government has been uh, very supportive, as I said, and it's taken on that issue similar positions with regard uh, to uh, uh, both Israel and the United States, so long as they are now on the same position. Of course, uh, Israel's conception of when the red line gets uh, crossed is somewhat different from that of the United States. For Israel, it gets crossed if Iran moves into nuclear uh, capability. Uh, for the United States, it may be when Iran actually acquires uh, a, a nuclear weaponization. So uh, let us hope that it doesn't get to the capability even, let alone the weaponization. Erwin Kotler, thank you so much for taking some of your time. We hope you enjoy the conference. Okay, not at all. Nice.